good morning. As you can see, I'm clean shaven now. So we're looking for a shad spawn. We're running around, stopping a lot of places. It's already my second stop. And uh, I'm gonna try to find a shad spawn. If not, we're gonna run straight up to the stained water early, try to catch some there, but let's get started. All right, so kind of the same deal as the other day. I got one in the water right here. In the water, it looks like about a 10 inch spot. I had to guess, I'm gonna say it's probably a 13 or 14 inch largemouth, but I can't, it looks like a spot and it looks like it's about that long. So we're gonna catch it, see how big it is. I think it's probably gonna be a 13 incher, maybe 14. Twelve-inch largemouth. Yeah, it's hard to gauge them because he, he's he was seriously probably three and a half, four feet deep, so it's hard to know how big they are. But you know that is obviously not what we're looking for, so I'm not gonna stop anymore that second. Yeah. I just marked a few that are way bigger than this. Some on measurement. Okay, this is a keeper. Which I did not think he was whenever I was messing with him. That's a good one there. I'm going to weigh it and mark it. I just marked a few that are way bigger than this. Some on measurement. Okay, this is a keeper. Which I did not think he was whenever I was messing with him. That's a two pounder. Two pound spot. Pound and three quarters. So the whole reason I caught him was because I know those other ones are like a half a pound to a pound bigger than him. So 
that gives me a little bit of confidence that the ones I found actually are pretty dang big. I thought that fish was a lot bigger than that. So I would have came here in the tournament and been like, there's one there I can catch for sure. And it's not even a keeper. Yeah, that's not a keeper. But I thought it was. Good thing I went ahead and pulled on it. It's 9.34 at night. Look what we messing with. Got that out of the boat. Dug that out of the back seat. All right. <sighs> Got everything done. Had to go get me some flipping jigs from Bass Pro. Some one ounce flipping jigs. If I catch a limit on my little beaver bait and I'm not catching any big ones, I'm gonna switch to a jig and put a beaver on it. Have it a real big presentation. But check this out. Had to bring a battery to the hotel room. Look at this. Uh oh, I don't want to see my finger, dude. Got it on a trickle charger. So, basically, my onboard battery charger gave me an error on this battery. And I'm scared that if I hooked it up and left it again, it'd give me the same error message in a couple hours. So I brought it in here, hooked it to my trickle charger just to make sure it charges at least a little throughout the night. So, if this don't pull it back, we're gonna take the truck battery out, I guess, tomorrow. and. We might not make it back from the ramp. We might have to need a jump. But anyways, Hunter asked me one time at a fishing tournament, because I always try to go get my boat charging and everything before the meeting, like I did that today. Hunter said one day, because everybody brings their boats to the meeting. She said, why does nobody else worry about their batteries the way you do? Nobody else has problems the way I do. I don't know, I don't understand it. I got problems when it comes to batteries, when it comes to trolling motors. I got problems. Don't know how to solve them. Anyways, tournament starts tomorrow. If y'all like the practice videos, guys, leave a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. Got to catch them up big tomorrow.